so let's come to another topic that is motion of center of mass so as we are clear with what is actually the question what is actually center of mass now we are clear we can discuss the motion of objects say suppose a body is moving both translatory and rotational we can easily apply center of mass and do the calculations so what is the importance of center of mass now you can take this as a definition or you can take this as a concept that is the center of mass of a system of particles set sorry the center of mass of a system of particles move as if all the mass of the system was concentrated at the center of mass and all the external forces were applied to at that point say suppose this is your rod this is a rod and a uniform force f is applied and a uniform force f is applied to all of this particles to all of this particle now because of the application of force f because of the application of force f this object will move in this particular direction it moves it gets a displacement of x it may get a displacement of x x may have some quantity positive quantity or it may be zero now when we know the center of mass and with our above def definition that is the center of mass of a system of particles of a system of particles moves as if as if all the all the mass of a system was concentrated it was concentrated it was concentrated at the center of mass at the center of mass and all the external forces were applied and all the external force external force was applied to that point so you can note down this definition to that point now let's understand what this definition is actually say say this is a rod we know the center of mass for the rod lies at this particular point that is between the center all of the mass of the rod can be concentrated as one point object that is the main function of center of mass we can consider the whole of this rod to be one point mass now by this definition by this definition what we can understand is that this whole this all of this rod can be concentrated into one and all the force this f force is distributed uniformly over all of this rod can be converted into this point mass say m and a force f will be applied over here and whatever will be the resultant whatever will be the resultant that is whatever action will this center of mass take will this center of mass take will be practically true for the whole of the rod this will be practically true for all of this rod for this whole system this will be practically true now i want to re explain this for example this is a rod the center of mass is over here by this definition we can say that if the rod is moving in this particular direction we can say that the center of mass is also moving in this particular direction and the vice versa of this law say suppose if the center of mass is moving we can assume that the whole of the 
mass that is the whole of the rod is also moving in the same fashion and all the forces that has been applied can be regarded as the force all of these forces is applied to one particular point that is your center of mass and in this way you can understand this particular theory so when you talk about motion we know that m r but r is a position vector m r is actually given as m i r i which is actually given as m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus till m n r n now why did we write this we know r is equal to 1 by m into summation of m i r i so m r is actually equal to this gets cancelled m i r i so this particular expression came from this and this expression came from our concept of center of mass of particles so if there is a motion that means the length the length is changing with respect to time if there is a motion then the length is changing with respect to time that is r is changing with respect to time so if we need to find the velocity what we can do is we can easily differentiate with the time t that is if there is a small change in r with respect to a small change in t then we will have the velocity velocity now if you are confused regarding this formula as i've said earlier please consult our previous motion videos where we have explained what is dr by dt and how we can achieve this particular form okay coming back a change in r with respect to t will give us the motion of the center of mass it will give us the motion of center of mass and this can be expressed as m dr by dt equals to m1 dr1 by dt plus m2 dr2 by dt plus so on this is mn drn by dt so this is how we can write so this dr by dt is nothing but your velocity that is v nothing but your velocity v so the formula changes to mv which is equal to m1 v1 now this is v1 now this is a velocity for the particle ri this is the rate of change of for m1 that is the rate of change of ri with respect to time t so for each case we'll have different velocities this is v1 this is v2 so for each case we are getting different velocities we are not getting the same velocities because these are different particles and this may have different velocities now what about a rigid body now if you talk about a rigid body you may say that the velocity is same but for example say suppose this is your a rigid body and say suppose this is rotating this is rotating so even this is a single system even if this is a single system but as you can see for each point for each point as i have explained earlier for each point the velocity is different for each point the velocity is different say this is rotating slowly but this point is rotating very fast that is it's covering big distances as compared to this this point this point is coming from here to here but this particular point is coming from this to this so we can see that even if it's a same body system it might have all the particles might have different velocities so this is what it's given by different velocities this is m2 v2 plus this is mn vn now 
this is what dr by dt actually means now if i integrate further now if i stop you and i ask you to notice what is mv what is mv now please keep in mind we will be discussing this later on but for now just stop for a moment and visualize mv is nothing but your momentum momentum of the whole system m and this are the individual momentum individual momentum of particles so this is the individual momentum of particles and this is the overall momentum of the center of mass as we have said we can concentrate all of the object into a single point mass that is situated in the center of the mass so by using this definition we can say that the whole system has a single momentum this has a single momentum of mv now if we further integrate with respect to dt if we further integrate v with respect to dt we'll have acceleration ma where a is the acceleration so if i further integrate i'll have m1 a1 plus so on till mn a n this is n this is mn a n so this is how we have derived this is how we have derived the expression for acceleration by differentiating velocity with respect to time now if you notice another important thing that is what is ma what is m a1 m1 a1 what is m n a n what is m2 a2 now if you take a moment and if you notice this term this is nothing but your force this is nothing but your force so i can say f1 plus f2 plus fn so m a is nothing but your the resultant of force f1 f2 till fn so this is nothing but the sum total of all the force so we can further so we can further calculate the total external force that is when we talk of the force f1 on the first particle it is not a single force but the vector sum of all the forces on the first particle now when we talk about force f1 say this is my object m and it's experiencing a force f1 now this is the total force say suppose m has been we have different parties this is m1 this is m2 this is m3 and so on we have different forces now when we write m a is equal to f1 plus sorry this is f2 plus f3 plus fn this is for the particle m1 this is for the particle m2 and this is for the particle m3 and so on till mn now what is this f1 what is this f1 f1 is not a single force that is acting on m1 but numerous forces can act on m1 numerous forces may be acting on m1 but f1 is the sum total that is the resultant force of all these forces this is f1 so f1 actually means this f1 actually means the sum total of all the forces that is acting on m1 this means f2 means sum total of all the forces that has been acting on m2 so this is how we can understand this is not a single force but the sum total of all the forces on m1 and similarly over here so please keep in mind please understand this conceptually for the second particle and soon among this forces on each particle there will be external forces exerted by bodies outside the system and also internal forces exerted by the particles on one another therefore we know that from newton's third law that this internal forces occur in equal and opposite pairs and 
and in the sum of the forces their contribution is zero now this is a statement see suppose these are the external forces and the resultant external forces is f1 now what about the internal forces what about the internal forces that has been applied so if an internal force of fk has been applied this body in turn will apply an internal force of minus fk so you need to consider only the external only the external forces all the other internal forces will be balanced out will be balanced out now why will this be balanced out if you ask me the question this is because of newton's third law this is because of newton's third law because if you push a object then the object then this object internal object will be pushed back by the body that is all actions has a equal and opposite reaction therefore ma the force that is experienced in the center of mass is actually due to force external all the other external forces all the other external forces so this is the important concept that you have to know now let's proceed further by understanding this particular concept let's proceed further into our next topic that is linear momentum of a system of particles that is we will talk about linear momentum of a system of particles